אלוהים קורא, ויקנאו עמי אשר נקרא שמי עליהם, ויתפללו, ויבקשו פניי, וישובו מדרכיהם הרעים, ואני אשמע מן השמיים, ואסלח לחטאתם, וארפא את ארצם. ישוע אומר לנו היום, ירושלים, ירושלים, ההורגת את הנביאים וסוקלת את השלוחים אליה. כמה פעמים חפצתי לקבץ את בנייך כתרנגולת המקבצת את אפרוחיה תחת כנפיה, ולא רציתם? הנה ביתכם יינטש לכם. ואני אומר לכם, מעתה לא תראוני עד אשר תאמרו. ברוך הבא בשם אדוני. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. nation has been divided and sold to her enemies. As your world collapses, you will be brought into bondage. Millions will flee the cities only to wander like the walking dead, aimlessly in search of food and water. Many will become cannibals to delay their own death, or they will die at the hands of men or by the beast of the field. Disease and pestilence will take hold. as you are forced into FEMA camps that are masquerading as safe zones in attempts to escape violence, starvation, and disease. Yet, once you are there, you will be beaten, tortured, forced into slavery, raped, and killed. Take heed and hear what the Lord of Hosts is saying to you. For your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, you shall see me no more till you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And at the end of this vision, I was taken to a FEMA camp. And the president was there. And I was brought face to face with him. And his eyes were that of a serpent. This vision was granted to me by the Lord in 2010. on May 5th at 4.44 a.m. The Lord gave me this dream in 2012. In the beginning of the dream, I was cutting through the jungle. And as I came out of the jungle, I looked around, I noticed there were other people with me, and that they were looking at me for leadership. We had come out of the jungle in a clearing that was by the river. Best I can tell, It was somewhere in the Amazon. And the center of this river 
there was a village, a fishing village. All of the people that were in this village, they were walking around naked, didn't have any clue what clothes were or how to cover themselves. But I also saw on the other side of the village that there was a way of escape, a boat. So I told everyone to get across the river and into the village. After everyone had swam across, I began my descent. As I was swimming, there was a massive, massive snake, a serpent, that came up behind me. It was a constrictor, an anaconda, but far bigger than what the ones are that we see today. As I approach the deck of the village, there was a young boy who put his hand out to help me up. As I was climbing onto the deck, the serpent struck. It missed me, and it hit the boy. Just the impact killed him. So I hurriedly climbed onto the platform and quickly gathered my people together to tell them to rush to the other side. All the while, the serpent was going crazy. It was striking at anything that moved, killing and swallowing people. Every time it would strike at us, it would miss, and it would hit somebody else. As we scrambled to the other side of the village, there was a boat. A, I guess you would call it a speedboat. I had everyone to pile in. And I hopped into the driver's seat and we took off. As fast as we could. As I looked behind, the village was on fire. The flames had engulfed it. And the serpent rose and glared at us. But it had changed forms. It was no longer an anaconda. It had changed into a cobra. And it began to chase after us. Once we had got down the river a ways, there was a clearing. I pulled the boat over and I told the people to scramble and to run. As we were running, we noticed that we were running through ruins. There were pillars, broken stained glass. It was a cathedral that was in shambles and had been destroyed. As we were going through the main part of this cathedral, there was this statue, a giant bronze lion. And as we went past it, it came alive. And it began to attack us. But just like the serpent, every time that it struck at us, or swiped at us with its claws, it would miss. And it would become that much more enraged. That much angrier. So we dodged the attacks as much as possible and kept running and came to another clearing but this clearing was an opening it was a pass there was, it was stone but it was a narrow passage with high walls on both sides so we ran into it and we kept going the line couldn't fit in so it climbed up to the top the sides of the walls and tried to swipe down at us but they were too tall for it to be able to reach us so we continued on this passage, and eventually it led us into what I originally thought was a cave system, but it wasn't. It was an internal network within a massive mountain. This mountain was very intricate. All sorts of passages, but there were supplies there as well. There were weapons, there was food, there was water. And at the top of this mountain, there was a... Uh, opening that led out over a peak over a cliff and from that vantage point I could look down and I could see the path that we had been on as well as the lion. The lion had stopped trying to chase us and was instead pacing back and forth at the beginning of the entrance and as I looked the lion that was pacing was joined by the giant cobra and I watched as they merged together and then changed form. They were no longer animals, but troops. 
They were military, dressed in complete black and had this symbol that was on their left shoulder. Reminded me of the old Nazi SS symbol. And once they changed form, they began to breach the entrance and to try and track us in the mountain that we had taken refuge in. So quickly I sensed that danger was there and I assembled everybody and took them to the weapons and the food and told them they need to stock up and told them what points they need to stand at so that we could mount our defense. After we were positioned, the troops wasted no time. They began to attack relentlessly. As soon as one fell, two more would replace him. But we continued to fight. And we fought until the last one had given up. And once we were safe and things had subsided, the dream ended. How's it going, people? Welcome back to Archangel. Um, first off, let me start by saying that the sharing of the dreams and visions is not to incite fear, not to incite panic, uh, or unease, even in the least. In fact, the only reason I'm doing this video is because for the last few weeks, every time that I go to the Lord in prayer, the that vision and that dream have been brought to memory. I feel that there is a sense of urgency to it. There is more than enough evidence now of what is going on, and if you haven't seen it, it's because you're not looking. Because it's everywhere, all around us. Now having said that, there's a couple other video clips we're going to go through, but it's going to be for confirmation. Because the reason why this is so important right now is you have to ha understand it from the strategic vantage point of the enemy. You have to understand physical warfare, not just spiritual. Although we well know that there's more than that, more than enough evidence of that happening. Tom Horn's sick. Steve Quell was taken down for a while. Thank God he's well and increasing, getting better. So the Lord's not done with him. We lost Rob Skiba. We lost Russ Dizdar. And I'm sure that we've lost others that uh, I have not known nor met on a personal level. Names that I've probably overlooked. So we know full well the weapons of the enemy are being mechanized against those who stand up and speak truth and are unafraid of the regime and their war machine. Now, I'll tell you what, I understand that the vision itself is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I didn't put a lot of images on that part because the word of the Lord is direct. And I felt it didn't need much elaboration, although I was shown things during the process of the vision. Uh, images that I really can't put up here. Uh, or I could, but if you have children, you wouldn't be able to watch it around them. Uh, now, where is this going? What is going to be the crescendo? Well, the second one that I shared, the dream, shows what the crescendo is actually going to be. We are watching the beginning phases, the rollout of the final plan, the final strategies. And uh, there's going to be a civil war here in America. It's going to break out. It's going to go hot. Now, by me sharing this, I'm not saying that it's going to be in the immediate future, though I'd be lying to you if I said that I didn't have that sense you know, those flags popping up. Uh, but there will be a civil war in America, and there will also be a world war, and they'll happen almost simultaneously. Now, the world war is going to be fast. It's going to be brutal. 
and it's going to be very, very gruesome. There's going to be lots of lives that are lost. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was watching on Rumble the other night, uh, Doug Hagman's show with Steve and, uh, Gary Haven, and, you know, uh, Haven ha even has the same sense of urgency that I do, and the, what the Lord showed him is also quite troubling. Actually, as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and let me play just a small clip of that for you real quick, that way you know what I'm talking about. You know, I wanted to close on that because it's so deep and profound. Uh, you know, the reason I began with 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 this information is, is uh, uh, you know, I said earlier, the Bible says fear not, but it does not say think not. And people need talking points. They need they need some data points. And I think I've laid them out here pretty clearly where where uh, they can take these to their pastor. They can take these to the doctor. They can take these to their mayor. Uh, uh, and, and we have to be the, the uh, men and women that are, are willing to be informed and, and have the courage because we're going to be shouted down. Uh, but what is, the, what, is, what, is, what are our children's lives worth, right? So uh, I, I want this to be a call to action. And, um, and, and yes, I'm going to share uh, the vision. A few weeks ago in the middle of the night, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit woke me up uh, in terror. And the vision I had was that uh, the Holy Spirit took me to the top of a high arching bridge. And the bottom was a body of water. As I was standing there at the top of this bridge, men and women were walking up to the highest point on the bridge, holding their children. And I noticed that these people were in a trance. And as they reached the top of the bridge, to my horror, they were throwing their children off the highest point of the bridge to their death, one right after the other. They were throwing their grandchildren off, the little boys and the little girls. And, and in particular, you know, I have a three-year-old granddaughter who's absolutely the love of my life. And, and I saw someone throw a three-year-old off. And I, and I, I set up in bed. Uh, sick, terrorized, and God allowed me to see what was coming. These parents who were lining up to give their children this thing are those that are walking up to the top of the bridge in a trance and about to throw their children to their death. I shared that vision with, with many, many people the last week or so as I was speaking publicly. And I think to the person they shared the horror with me, we must stop the genocide of our children now. I think it's important. Now, in that brief little snippet, which, by the way, I recommend you guys go and check out the entire show, uh, you can find it on HagmanReport.com, or you can go to Rumble and type in Hagman Report, and it should come up. I think it's the last show that they did. Um, but in Brother Gary's dream that the Lord gave him, he said that the people walked up in a trance-like state. I cannot describe to you how important that phrase is uh, because whether you understand it or not uh, as a matter of fact if you look back to uh, my video ritualization of America um, <clears throat> I make the point that not just America but the world has been put through a massive initiation ritual 
part of the initiation ritual, those that it actually succeeds on, those people that fall victim to that mental manipulation become slaves. They no longer view their life or the lives of others as unique and important, but will do whatever is best for the quote-unquote collective. They are in a trance. And we see it all around us. It's gotten worse. The violence is increasing. Uh, it's gotten bad. It's getting worse. All right? Uh, so I cannot begin to describe to you how important that phrase is. Uh, these people don't even realize what they've been put through, what's been done to them, because they lack understanding, and they're completely ignorant of the machinations of the enemy. They have no understanding of psychology. They have no understanding of mind control, brain wave manipulation. They know nothing about witchcraft. Nothing. Therefore, they cannot resist it. They don't know how. And that's not even getting into what's in the jabs and stuff like that, which I will get into that in another video because it's important, but not, well, actually, I'm not going to make that statement because it's important to what we're discussing today as well. Uh, now, having said that, I do want to break down the dream with the serpent to you guys for understanding. Uh, <clears throat> in the beginning of the dream, it showed that we were coming out of the wilderness, right? We were coming out of, uh, what's the best way to put it? A lack of understanding. What was fogged became clear. We were able to have a clear grip and understanding in the direction we were supposed to take and do. That's what the jungle was. That's what the clearing when we walked out onto the river represented. Uh, there was no more clutter. We could see our mission, our objective, what we were supposed to do. We understood it and we went for it. Uh, the people that were with me in the dream, I believe, were the remnant. I don't know exact names and whatnot as of yet, but the Lord will reveal those in time. The village that was out in the middle of the river is the world. The naked people walking around are the people of the world. They know nothing of God, therefore they are not clothed in righteousness or anything else, and they don't even realize it. The serpent, naturally, is the enemy. It's Lucifer and his hordes. All right. Now, the significance of the serpent is when it first appeared, right? it appeared in the form of a constrictor, an uh, anaconda, if you will. Titanoboa, whatever. I don't care what constrictor you want to label it as. You can label it as a python for all I care. I don't care. Uh, but the type of snake it was was a constrictor. Those type of serpents coil themselves around their victim, and they slowly crush and squeeze the life out of them. That's how they operate. That's how they kill. All right? So that represents the enemy's attack on the world. What are you seeing now? Economies have been shut down, practically ground to a halt. Small businesses are all but destroyed at this point. Uh, supply routes, ships, cargo, all of that stuff is being constrained to a standstill. Uh, food is being weaponized and destroyed one bit at a time. Uh, hyperinflation is happening. The life you once had is being strangled out of existence. It's destroying everything around you. Crazy dogs. One second. One second. Okay, I'm back. Anyone that has dogs know that they are the ultimate alarm system, and anytime someone comes to the door, Good luck making a video. Anyways, <clears throat> as I was stating, uh, the food, I believe that's where I left off at. Now, Janice and I, thanks to our acquaintances and uh, contacts and everything else, uh, we have been informed by one of our friends uh, that is a farmer down in Arkansas that uh, a couple months ago, some fed boys showed up on his property. 
and uh, they offered him an amount of money to destroy his crops. He wanted to resist. And they said that if he did, that they're just going to spray his entire field with Agent Orange. So he asked, he said, well, how am I supposed to know how much I'm supposed to destroy? He said, and they told him that we have you on satellite. And once you destroy it enough, we will contact you. That's the game they're playing. Do you understand what is happening? Same thing happened in Soviet Russia. You know, during the Bolshevik Revolution, you know, they were using food to control anyone that would resist on top of psychological warfare. I believe the numbers were some odd 50 or 60 million people were killed by the Soviets. And they didn't care who you were. Even if you worked for them, they'd take you and throw you in the gulags. Read Alexander Solzhenitsyn's Gulag Archipelago sometime. It's very eye-opening. You might learn a thing or two. Alright. <clears throat> now having said that, once we made it to the other side of the platform, and take heart because, as I told you in the dream, you know, in the first part, uh, every time the enemy struck at the remnant, they missed. Or at least the people that I was with, he would miss. And he'd become that much more enraged. Uh, so when we made it to the other side and into the boat, the boat what represents God's way of speeding us away from cities, destruction, to safety. No, it does not represent a rapture. So if that's what you're thinking, go ahead and get that out of your head. Uh, I don't care if what you believe, personally, pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, I don't care. It's whatever. Believe what you want to. But I know expressly that in that particular dream, the boat did not represent a rapture. If it did, then why would we go from the world into being attacked by the bronze line while we were still in the world? Okay, so... Enough said on that. But when I turned to look back and the world was burning, right? The village was on fire. The serpent rose up and glared at us, and it, but it had changed forms. It changed from a constrictor to a viper. The significance in that is it was no longer a slow kill method. It was transferring from a slow attack and a slow death to something that is very rapid and very aggressive. Vipers don't constrict you. They bite you, they inject venom, and then you die from it. Especially with cobras. Venom in those boys is nasty. Uh, but then it started to pursue us and chase us down the river. We came to the opening, right? We were going through the ruins. The ruins represents what's left of the church. The foundations have been destroyed. How many churches do you know that have uh, transgender pastors or homosexual pastors or racist pastors or pastors that belong to the Masons or... Anyways, it represented the destroyed church. The bronze line represents a false prophet, which I actually do believe that that is the current Pope, Pope Francis. Look at the meetings that he just had with Biden. Look at his support for forcing the vaccinations on people. And what else can I say? Watch what he does next. He will very openly start criticizing and attacking Christians that don't fall in line with what he's selling. It's coming. Watch it unfold. But just like the serpent, every time he swung at us, every time he tried to kill us, he missed. Every time. Not because of what we did, but because of God's provision. Because of God's angels. Because God forcing him to miss. Now we find us at the narrow passageway. 
The narrow passageway obviously represents the path of Christ. It's narrow. It's hard. But it has to be done. The mountain represents God. He is our high fortress, our tower, and our refuge. He is our great mountain, the ones that we, you know, the one that we actually abide in. But the enemy didn't stop, did they? No. But the final form of the enemy gives us a glimpse into what's coming. Soldiers, troops, armies. However, we also see at the end of the dream that God provided provision for his people. Food, water, weapons, everything that we need to stand our ground and be able to defend ourselves. Now granted, I understand there are a lot of pacifist Christians out there who say, oh, you're not supposed to fight and just pray and blah, 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 blah. That's the boat you're in. Have fun, Hoss. It's up to you. Every person in Christ's kingdom has a different job. I'm not going to tell you what your job is because I don't know, so don't you dare try and tell me mine. We're just going to leave it at that. Some of us are called to be warriors. Our entire purpose in this life is to protection and defense of others. But I digress. Now, I've been a big proponent. You guys have always told, heard me tell you that you have to understand not just physical warfare, but you have to understand spiritual warfare. You have to know your enemy. You have to know what they do. You have to know their weapons, their styles, their tactics, everything else. That way you can, first off, pray against them and target them in the spirit. And if it comes down to it, know how to handle yourself in the physical realm. I mean, uh, look at David and Goliath. If David was a modern evangelical, uh, Israel probably would have been destroyed. I'm just saying. At some point, David had to pick up a sling and a stone and go to work. Say what you will, but that's the truth of the matter. Just like Elijah with the prophets of Baal. Read the Old Testament sometime. See how much of a pacifist God really is. Anyways, I digress again. Sorry. Personal points. But uh, these things are coming about and they're coming to fruition. You're seeing it happen one thing after another. Uh, later on in that interview with Gary Haven, if you guys do me a favor, go watch it. It's, it's well worth a watch. I mean, it made me happy to see that Steve was getting better. You know, God's awesome. Uh <clears throat> But later on in that video, he openly says that he thinks this thing's going to go to kinetic. It's going to become physical. Same thing I've been seeing. If that's the case, I hope you know how to prepare. I hope you're exercising. I hope you're dieting. I hope you're trying to make sure you're at the best physical performance that you can be should worst case scenario happen. Again, I'm not saying that it will. All I know is what God has shown me, and I know what I'm sensing. Don't take my word for it. Take it to the Lord in prayer. All right? And I'm not the only person that's seeing this and understanding this. You know, people that have little to no relationship with God are even seeing these things. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put up a video when I close this out so you can see that very clearly. And the two gentlemen that are on this in video are a couple of veterans. They know warfare, just like I do. They see what the enemy is doing. They see that he's coming. They see the strategies unfolding. So you would do well. You would do well to uh, take their advice and at least heed what they have to say. But as always, like I've stated, seek God about it. Talk to the Lord. Pray. Ask Him for insight. All right? Having said that, I'm going to close this video out. And the next one, I plan on getting more in-depth into the actual poke and what's in it. 
and uh, do a little bit of criticizing of, you know, the InfoWars people because of that retarded doctor that they had on that was trying to discredit what the other doctors who come out have said. Uh, but that's a discussion for another time. So until then, it's Archangel. I'm out. When these little phones shut off, it's time to get with the program. They don't want us to have any communication. They've listened to us. They're watching us. They know who we are. They know who we are. And I'm ready to die for the valor of God. When these little things shut off, you better hunker. Stand strong. Pray. We're never getting out of life alive. So stand up and be there when these little things shut off. So, there you go, my friends. You got it. So let's get something straight here. Joe Biden just signed an executive order saying by November 1st, if veterans are not vaccinated, we can no longer get any health care through the VA. So let's discuss this a little. As a veteran and a combat soldier, there's certain things you do to prep your enemy for when you're about to attack. And basically what it boils down to is you make life harder for them. We've got farmers getting paid to mow over their crops right now. So that's the food part. We're threatening a bunch of workers that if you don't get vaccinated, you're going to lose your job. So there's the financial part. You mysteriously arm another country with $85 billion worth of equipment, which gives you a pretty formidable opponent to go against. You mandate all active duty members get vaccinated or they get kicked out. Basically, what it is is you make them an offer they can't refuse. You cut off our import of certain ammunitions for certain weapon systems from Russia, which there's the means of self-defense. You start paying everybody that's playing your little game so that they'll think it's good. And there's the almighty dollar right there. It's kind of ironic I'm making this video right now. And oh yeah, by the way, speaking of that, because of that video I put up, you silence people from being patriotic. You call people that are considered patriotic terrorists. So now you're putting a label on us and identifying us as a threat. Are y'all fucking listening yet? I'm, I'm praying to the gods that this does not develop into something even worse. This country is the greatest country in the world. But this happening in the last seven to eight months, it, this is an extreme amount of pressure. Everybody heard what's going on with Australia. I'm pretty sure if one country can do it, so can the rest of them. And the sad thing is, is I'm just as pissed off as everybody else. And not because it's happening, because we're letting it happen. But everybody knows where that leads. None of us want that. Please, we, we don't. So let's all stand up together and do something about this. Because it ain't going to get any better. And you know it. This is the Colonel. Out here. There's no rest for the fallen.